So we do is we're going to check up here to the next road crossing. Um, we might leave these leopard trucks for now because more likely to stay on um, on Juma and try to follow up on those line tracks because they are far more likely to, especially if it's the males, it is the males, that to walk straight through and out like they've done a couple of times. Um, so what we will do is we know where the leopard tracks are, we can always come back to them and they are heading deeper into our property at the moment. Whether it's those lion tracks could very easily cross. Just ask Mark, uh, Mark which roads he drove around Treehouse Dam. Flies? Yeah, started. Leopard. Yeah. And again, we hit the, the tracks. We've got the leopard. Let me just get round. He's moving up the drainage line. Yeah, we don't want to lose the leopard. It's going into that, it's quite a thick block here above the, in the drainage line. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is going to be fun. 
track. Uh, I just don't want to lose him in this before. There you can see there. Uh, looks like one of the young males. I'm pretty sure it's the same leopard we've been tracking from the first set of leopard tracks we found this morning. Oh, I think it could be Kunuma. Yeah, just judging by the character, he's just did a huge leap for no apparent reason. There's a spring in his head. Heard all those birds tittering around. Where did he go? There, got him. Uh, now comes the fun part. Yep. making our life a little bit difficult here. Oh, well, at least it looks like he's, after doing that, he's going to take us straight back to a road. Just because. I uh, look at uh, my daughter Ingwe, Snubbage's track, uh, Mobile West. Well, I'm just trying to be okay. <laughs> Fun and game start. Thanks very much, Sherry, but it looks like we've lost him again. Um, we're going to try to find him again now. It's just he's going through this very difficult area to follow. Yeah, the last place I definitely saw him was on that fallen marula there. Yeah. And he was heading this way. Let's just check. Is he gone behind us? He gone behind us? Yeah, he gone behind us. Sneaky. Right. No, not yet. Just fine. Oh, that's exactly where the last place we saw him. Ah, I got him. Exactly. 
He, he looks like he's just playing. He's jogging and jumping around. But he doesn't have a care in the world. on the termite mountain. <laughs> He's really giving us a run around. He's literally jumping around like a kitten at the moment, like just running between bush and bush and bush. than a Land Rover. Those stations, uh, this thing has crossed uh, savages uh, in a northerly direction, now in the block. Savage's track is now mobile north in the block uh, between uh, Savage's and Philemon's cut back. Oh, why do you choose monkey orange thickets? Still got him. Oh, there's a termite mound coming up. Please go have a rest. <laughs> Just so I can have a rest. Go into the termite mound. That leopard we saw yesterday, I know there's a lot of people who've been calling it a hooty, um, but I've tracked, and we tracked these tracks almost from exactly the same spot where we saw him uh, yesterday. Um, the tracks of that big, the bigger male, um, Mvula, went um, further east. So I'm pretty sure what we saw yesterday was not Bahuti but was Kunyuma. Um, especially now since we've tracked him all the way from there. York is moving quickly today. He's jumping again. Up, running up to the next termite mound. morning.
Sorry about the clicking, if anyone's new and hearing that. It's um, just my camera. Oh, I love tracking and finding my own animals. Gives me so much joy. Don't change direction again now back through those thickets. Well, of course he's going to. Just trying to find the best way possible for the vehicle. We cannot go where he's going through at the moment. As much as I pride myself in being able to take vehicles to a lot of places. Uh, I've lost him. Did you saw him? Oh, he's stalking an elephant. <laughs> yeah, I can just see him. He's probably about 15 meters from an elephant. The elephant through there, he's directly between us and the elephant. The elephant's now coming this way. Young Eddie, Eddie Paul. Now heading straight. So I'm trying to move forward a tiny bit more. Heading straight towards the leopard. Can you see Penuma? Yeah. And there's Penuma. Now deciding coming towards us. It's better than the, than the, than the Eddie. Definitely seems full of the joy of life this morning, the way he's jumping around. What? No hiss. <laughs> How rude. Oh, the elephants. Oh. Isn't that wonderful? It's like between a, a, a leopard and an elephant. My idea of a, a good Thursday morning session. I think he might go towards
the last ones I had of my daughter um, was heading west into the block between Elephant Skull and Gary Main um, near Twin Dams. Hold on. Uh, Kunyuma. Guys, like me, the Monsulu cut in. Uh, we're now coming out onto the Monsulu cut line. Probably about 500 meters from the Monsulu. So, it's taken us the long way, I mean the shortcut, but definitely not the easy way through um, that block. And it looks like nah, no more roads for me today. Can I make these guys work for it? Although this area, it should be a lot more open and easier for us to follow than the last area we went through. halfway between our east and western boundary by now. It's actually much closer to our western boundary than our eastern boundary. But the first tracks we did find were from quite late last night, so he's obviously rested up somewhere. And then the only really fresh tracks were the ones we got as we came across the drainage line. And I said, oh, we found those tracks again. In this general direction, you might end up at the Mahina Den. I'm just going to try get a little bit ahead because this is a little bit of a nasty area that he's in at the moment. Whoa! Watch out for flying branches. actually heading almost directly towards the island at the moment. He's quite far. Uh, young male leopards have been known to kill hyena cubs quite frequently. See, I've seen it before. Sort of dart in, grab one of the youngsters that's playing a little bit further and then just kip, bite and disappear. Lion around leaf tea thicket.
No, all four tyres still intact. Awesome. <laughs> Got your flies? I lost my flies. No, I've got lots of flies. Maybe, uh, maybe, they, maybe, they, maybe they like you today. The stations, this Mondo Dingo is now stationary. Um, probably about 200 meters from uh, Philemon's cut line to the north. I've still got visual. Okay, copy. You can see where my trucks go off them now. Um, we probably are 300 meters from there. Um, but when I get your vehicle audio, I'll just call you in. So, can you go with the first one from Simon again? Morning, Simon from Australia. Simon would like to know whether I've ever punctured tyres driving off-road like I have. I am. Unfortunately, uh, Simon, many, many, many times. <laughs> it is a. It's quite a common occurrence. Um, what you learn to do is to choose which trees to try to avoid. So you try to avoid your zebra woods, um, your sickle bush and your baby lead woods. Um, they're very hard woods and the spines go straight through the tires very easily. And the next one. This is not for the Gambra vehicle for me as well. Yeah. I might not hear it. Andrew, can you just go again with that one? Air from coming. Do you see where my Nkonzo crosses uh, Philemon's cut line? Okay, copy. Um, there's an old, it looks like a pipeline that runs west from a uh, parallel to Philemon's cut line. We're still further north of that, uh, of that old pipeline or old fire rack. We're between Philemon's cut line and Rebecca's road at the moment, quite close to the drainage, but still to the southern side of the drainage. Morning, Charlie. Charlie uh, wants to know if a family of leopards, I'm presuming me, met another family of leopards, would they know each other? Um, if they were related, it is possible. Um, but if it depends on the age, uh, they would generally fight uh, or try to chase each other off and the weaker one would just run away. Unless they got caught by a more dominant one, then they would, um, would try to kill them. But uh, male leopards will tolerate young males of about this age, but not for too much longer. At, at, they're getting to the age now where the, the dominant males will start pushing them out of the area. 
And obviously this is good for genetics because it pushes them away from their mother and sisters, which will hold territory in this area, and forces them to um, mate with uh, unrelated females. On the move again, Efren is mobile again, still heading north towards the drainage. Yeah, quite far and forward. Just come up. Uh, Finn wants the, I'm not sure where the best access is actually going to be off Rebecca's if he crosses the strainage line. Yeah, he's going into the drainage line now. Just stand by one now. I'll update you. I'm just going to try to find a spot that's very thick for me to go through where he is. spotted them. You can hear the alarm calling. Choo -choo. They're like leopard, leopard, leopard. Tim, just give me a second and I'll get to your questions. Air from coming. I'd keep coming on to, uh, to on Rebecca's towards Zoe's junction. He's mobile in that direction. Oh no. Sorry, back to your question, Ashwin. Oh, sorry. What was the name again? Andrew? Blair. Um, 
morning glare. Sorry, I had to just try to make sure it didn't get stuck. Um, just stand by one. Um, I didn't get stuck there. Um, one, Blair's wants to know if I've ever seen a serious never fight. Uh, yes, I have. I've seen a few. Um, but they are generally, most of the time, they don't get very serious. It's very seldom that they'll actually really, really go at each other. Most of the time, it's a, a lot of calling and hissing and snarling and a couple of sort of taps at each other. But I have seen two very, three very serious fights. Mike coming. Uh, copy will let you know. It's still mobile now. Our uh, best access is going to be from Rebecca's. Uh, about halfway between the junction with Philemon's tip and Zoe's. It's probably now about 200 meters uh, to the west of Rebecca's. Uh, it's still mobile to uh, mobile north. again. He's covered an inordinate amount of ground since yesterday. A firm, A firm, F. Ah, wrong radio. A firm, F. -M. What's your position now? Okay, He's still coming north. Um, can't see how far I am from the road just yet. At least it's a bit easier than the, the first session he came through. Go ahead. Ophim, um, you'll be first standby. wonder if he's in eagle. It's getting a bit warm. It might be worth having a little lie down here, giving Brent a break. No, no, no such luck. So you might have seen something that we can't see. Did he lay down or is he still standing? Done. No, he's still standing. He's sitting. With other leopards, 
I just wait. But with Penuma, he moves so quickly um, that I don't want to take the chance of him doing a disappearing act on us. switch off I'll try to give you a rev um, and then maybe you can make your way he's stationary at the moment but I think he will still keep moving Okay, our FM, we're probably, I reckon, from the Nisikaya, halfway between the Nisikaya and Philemon's Dip. What an awesome morning so far. Kunyuma. He suddenly just ran right up to the car for no apparent reason. Okay. Just literally raced up to the car for no reason for about 25 meters to give us a snarl. <laughs> He's a very funny leopard. Again, mobile again. Hey, Firm. Um, we're going to come out onto Rebecca's very shortly, I think. where we crossed the road. Or he decided just to walk up the road. Oh, he's seen something. We can't see what it is. Ephraim, can you book a any mala or anything on Rebecca's? Yeah, I think he's just seen those mala. He's on the road now. Oh, 
it could be um, Nongo. I can't see through the bush. I can just see movement. Yeah, I, actually, I, I can see some impala now. And uh, yeah, just some impala. They're actually moving down towards us. Yeah, I can see the mala. Um, Ingo is probably 100 meters, maybe a bit less. Carol. Following some consul from Chitakata. We told her a tree house there, and now you found a from tree house here. The first in consul went south, Chitakata line. Second in consul came north at Twin Dams, and then west into the block near that drainage that runs from Twin Dams. I don't know what's wrong with my team, but they're from Bakashan. Let me just move a little bit so you guys can see. Yeah, so we've gone into full stalk mode, guys. I'm just gonna try to move up. Oh, what's that? Into a better position. Behind that shulu. He went behind the shulu. Side of them, uh, Impala. You got it. Where is he? Termite yes. Mount. It's just to the left of the Termite Mount. Yeah. That is just to the left of the Shiduru, I think. See him?
if there's that round leaf teak bush in front of you, he's underneath that. All right, copy. I'm going to stand by here. He's just lying down. Yeah, lay down. Just a push in between, I can't see. Mm. <laughs> yeah, Mike, it's ours. Um, we knew we lost it, but we didn't want to lose the, uh, the Ingwe while he was going through. <laughs> he was moving quite quickly there. But I'll cut your pillow. Also, I think it fell on fresh buffalo dung, Andrew. Your pillow fell on fresh buffalo dung. waiting here to see the impala we can't see them are somewhere in front of us but obviously he's moved around he's using available cover and quite often leopards can be very very patient he might even sit half a day waiting for them to come close enough for him to grab although there is quite a lot of cover around here so he might try stalk them but again it might be this afternoon only Confirm, is he moving again? Well, looks like he's given up on the fire. So he's okay. So I'm just going to show you where the impala are. There's a herd of impala right there. He is probably 30 meters from them. Okay. What we're going to do is try and have a look where everyone else is parking. But we're probably in the best position right now if he charges out. So he's, according to Ephraim, he's probably, probably from the closest impala, less than 30 meters. So all of us, we're just going to stand right here. Thank uh you. -huh. 
There he goes. You got him? He's moving towards the Impala. Oh, he's been spotted. Not sure. That's not a full alarm call yet. I think the Impala is confused. It thinks it... No, nah, there we go. <laughs> Jigs up. Jigs up. And you got a little bit just too eager there if you had waited another five minutes. He gets too excited. He gets too excited. The thing is now he's probably got his tail up. He might just move away. As soon as the snorting starts, the game is over. down flat underneath the magic quarry. Morning, Virginia. Um, yes, they do, uh, but it's very difficult to tell the difference uh, in their alarm calls. But I'm sure if you spoke squirrel, you would. I met a tracker. Oh, sorry, the, the, the question was, um, do squirrels have different alarm calls for different predators? And as I was saying, I'm quite sure they do, uh, but it's very, very difficult to tell the difference between them. 
and um, I've only met one person who claims to be able to tell the difference between squirrel alarm calls and I actually believe he can. He can tell whether it's a alarming at a slender mongoose or a, uh, or a, a leopard or a quite wider with at the moment, it's just easier for us to move through the bush. Mike coming. Sorry, but I think the first access now might be uh, Zoe's. maybe eight inches long very very bright looking into the eastern sky from this angle it's quite a common tree lizard around here but we don't get to see them very often I know there are a couple that we've seen on the other occasion up on cheetah cut line because those big marulas up there are great for these these lizards to be bark. 
and they are cryptically colored to look like bark. The males have an incredible... blue head. Uh, up in Kenya you get the red-headed tree agama, which has more of a blue body but a beautiful red head. Maybe I'll have to post one of my photos of the red-headed one of these days. Interesting thing about these lizards is that the young males, if they're not dominant males, the young males take on the appearance of the females so as not to be hounded by the males because you'll only get one dominant male in a sort of a, a small lizard society that, that live in a particular area very similar to the rock agamas that can live in larger communities there again the males if they're not dominant if they don't hold territory they don't get the big red head hasn't moved has it Let's look at bark. I'm going to try maybe put the back of the vehicle into this bush. Also, there have been a couple of flowers that I hope I can find again that I saw. We don't have, I haven't seen any of this particular, two of these flowers or these two on Juma. They were in a drainage line that we were driving along. Yes, sir. It's gone. You see, they can't really. Not, these lizards are very sharp. Really Anyways, I think Brent found what he's been looking for.